I like to think of Bitcoin and gold in terms of Netflix and Blockbuster. Uh, I actually think that gold has the potential to be Blockbuster, so to speak, by Bitcoin itself, because Bitcoin is in a way startup gold. It's got all the properties of gold, um, but then it has a lot of characteristics that make it a superior form of gold in terms of being more portable, more scarce, uh, much harder to mine, much easier to verify. So it offers um, a lot of the benefits of analog gold, but brings with it certain benefits that make it arguably a much better store of value. Of course, that thesis is yet to play out, but I think the United States or really any nation state should have an interest in accumulating its own strategic reserve more or less as a call option on the thesis that Bitcoin does one day either achieve parity with gold or even surpass it. Um, just from that perspective alone, I think it makes sense for countries to own at least a little bit of Bitcoin in the same way that it makes sense for individual investors, um, some might say, to own a little bit of Bitcoin. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor and that's not financial advice, but I think that's the thesis behind um, a lot of accumulation on an individual level. And I think pretty yeah. soon we'll see that same accumulation among uh, pension funds and companies and eventually nation states. Yeah, I don't think that's a far, far stretch. I mean, having gold is is a, a hedge against the, their own fiat system, right? I think uh, um, at least the central bank in my country has has said that literally. You know, we have gold in case um, our money system doesn't survive. But what I find interesting, and I think once that clicks, that's probably far away. But then we will see more of the shift towards Bitcoin. Is that you know, why do you have gold? Yeah, I have gold because everyone else has gold. So why does everyone else have gold? Yeah, because, you know, it was used by the Egyptians for, for these amounts of years and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's all talk, right? Like, it's kind of like someone said it and then they all, they all followed each other, right? Like, it, it feels like, and, and it's funny, I don't know, uh, I, I forgot to ask what, which, gen, which generation you belong to, but like, for me, just, thinking about owning gold myself feels so old right yeah. like it, it feels prehistoric like what are you what, what are you talking about you know like why should you own a shiny rock not to diss the gold box whatever like do do whatever you want but at, at least for me as someone who grew up in you know first analog then a digital age like just holding a shiny rock doesn't make sense for me and holding it because other people say it has value right like it's it's a story, you know, and I think Bitcoin is is the and and you have to trust in the story of gold, right? And and the, the don't trust verify, you know, tagline of Bitcoin for me just makes much more sense. Like, should I believe in something because other people say it, or should I believe in something or have conviction on something that it could help me because I can verify it for myself, right? Like just. Just that is for me, it's, it's just way more rational to have Bitcoin. Like you don't have to believe yeah. it, like you can verify it, right? And gold is more of a, of a belief type asset. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Like you said, you can verify everything on the blockchain. It's the most transparent form of money that exists. And yeah, for the record, I, I too am a millennial. So All right. uh, when I saw, <laughs> okay, the Bitcoin for Millennials podcast, I'm like that's right up my alley. <laughs> Yeah. And, and yeah. I think gold is great. And I think, you know, one advantage of gold over any other I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't that... work, right? But this is better. That, yeah. That, that is more the conclusion. Sorry. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say gold has the advantage of being Lindy, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been uh, proven over time to be a pretty amazing store of value. Um, but I think a lot of gold bugs kind of rest on their laurels sometimes. By saying, oh, Bitcoin is it Lindy like gold is. Well, it isn't yet because it's very young still, but it seems like Bitcoin is in its teenage years as a digital or as a financial asset. And we're seeing it, you know, what happens to your teenage years, a growth spurt, right? Yeah. Uh, we could see like a real price accumulation over the next decade that could put it on even terms with gold. And I, I just love, because I feel the same way as a, as a millennial. I mean, so much of our lives are lived online that um, I, I don't, enjoy particularly owning physical things. Um, of course, you know, a car, 
like basic necessities, TV, computer, those are all things you need, but there's certain conveniences with owning things digitally. And I think that's the beauty of Bitcoin. You know, you can carry Bitcoin with you wherever you go, as long as you remember the seed phrase. And that in and of itself is a revolutionary technology. I, I just think of some of the, you know, Bitcoin millionaires out there, the fact that they can transport their wealth with them wherever they go, across borders, across customs, just by knowing their seed phrase in their head is truly incredible. Whereas with gold, to transport gold anywhere um, is a huge financial cost. <laughs> There's yeah. security risks that go with it. And so again, it's just one area where I think Bitcoin is in many ways a superior form of gold. Yeah, I think two things like the, the argument of people who like gold, where they say like Bitcoin is young. I think that's the weakest argument. It's not an irrelevant argument, but I think it's the weakest. So we, we already ended up at the weakest argument, right? Just because something is new doesn't mean it cannot be better, right? Like I think, I, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's just a weak argument. Yes, it's true. But, you know, look at all the other stuff, uh, as you just alluded to, you know, um, more transportable, all these things. Um, so I think it's interesting that we're already there. And I agree with you, like a lot, at least from my perspective, a lot of gold people are just like, yeah, I have gold. I'm just, yeah, I'm good, you know, but they forget that there's also competition in assets, competition in, in money, you know, and because Bitcoin is a digital money, it's more fierce competition and the adoption will go faster than, you know, any other physical alternative, right? If there would be any alternative. Uh, basically and and what you said i think uh, you know for millennials and i think this is one of the points that i'd love to reiterate on we grew up with you know limewire kaza uh, you know like uh, napster all these things like everything on the internet anything that's digital can be created and copied infinitely okay and so if there's a technology that makes something that's digital finitely scarce you have to pay attention because that is the that is the invention right that is the discovery that that is not possible with any other digital thing so the fact that it is possible here and that even you know and i find this still hard to explain but this is a digital thing but it's almost tangible right like you can write down letters and numbers with a pen on the paper and that can represent that information can represent a billion dollar asset you know so it makes it makes it tangible i love what jack Mahler says about you know the information is the asset um, and that that is really what bitcoin is and i think i don't know how you look at that i'd love to hear but that is one of the most important things i think to make to just show like that is the innovation the fact that you cannot just copy this endlessly that's the entire point yeah, it's incredible. I mean, Bitcoin was really the first invention to even introduce the whole idea of digital scarcity. And that in and of itself, in my opinion, is a multi-trillion dollar idea. And I think we'll see Bitcoin achieve a multi-trillion dollar market cap over time because that's how much value is behind such a revolutionary concept. Uh, the idea, too, of digital versus analog makes me think again of the Netflix versus Blockbuster analogy. So um, comparing gold to Blockbuster, Blockbuster, I, I figure most of your audience is millennials, and maybe some Gen Z. And so maybe even some Gen Z remember what Blockbuster was. Lots of boomers too, those, actually. <laughs> yeah, lots. Okay, lots of boomers. So they, know, so, they know Blockbuster. Right, right. So, so of course, with Blockbuster, people would go to a physical video store, they would rent a physical um, video cassette or DVD, and they would take it home with them. And they would, you know, put it into their VCR and, and things would play. And it was all physical. It was all analog. Then Netflix came along and introduced a new concept of uh, mailing DVDs and video cassettes to people. And eventually Netflix went straight to digital and it became a streaming service. And the whole time Blockbusters thought, oh, this is just an upstart company. You know, we don't have to worry about this. But the second Netflix went all digital, it was game over for Blockbuster. And that I think is the genius behind Bitcoin itself. It takes the business model or um, essentially the economic value of gold and it makes it digital in a way uh, that no other invention has before. And it achieves what you were describing, Brom, that digital scarcity, which is so important um, in a world of 
digital abundance, right? If you can make something that is truly digitally scarce that can't be replicated, like Kazaa uh, and Napster and songs that we would listen to growing up, um, that in and of itself really changes the game and allows there to be a currency of the internet that has the potential to change not only how we transact on the internet, but as we transact as human beings. I like to think of uh, money as sort of the layer zero of humanity. And currently that layer zero is fiat currency. And I think that begets a lot of the problems that we're seeing in the world um, with fiat or with inflation. And that has trickle down effects that really affect uh, every corner of our society. But if you can change that layer zero to some kind of currency that is hard, that gives people the ability to save over time, you're essentially swapping out the layer zero of humanity, which could change the way human civilization itself operates. And that is the promise of Bitcoin. And one of the reasons why I love working in this industry, because if we can really make true on that promise, if we can bring about a world where currency is hard again, and it is cannot be manipulated by central bankers or politicians who are trying to sell the future of uh, their children to people here in the present, then that can really change the way things work in the United States and Europe, really all across the world.